I picked up, no one else is on this. Um, are we recording yet? Uh, no, but there is, uh, Miles Nelson is on. Hello, Mr. Nelson, how are you? All right, we got some folks coming in. Okay, I'll, I'll have to let you, I'm gonna stop by tomorrow, I think. All right. I have some stuff to drop off. If I said that I was doing well, that was a lie. I actually had food poisoning over the weekend. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it was. It's, that is really terrible. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm still feeling some of the effects, uh, but I'm I'm here. I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for you. I was at a, a hockey convention. I was at a convention. Where at? Uh, up, up, up in New York State, right by the border, by all those lakes and everything. And we had some seafood that wasn't the good. And the same thing happened to me. And I'll tell you, it's not pleasant. Yeah. It's like the economy, Dante. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hi, everybody. We're going to wait till about 7.05, and then we will start. We're trying to figure out how to get out of something. Right. Also going to Street one. Hello, Miss Kimbo. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Very well. Very well. Everything going okay? Uh, yep, just got back from uh, traveling to Africa, so. Oh, wow. Where'd you go? Morocco. So I went to Casablanca and Medica, uh -huh. and then I spent a day in Madrid. That's terrific. I was in Morocco, in Casablanca, and the surrounding areas for work like 30 years ago. Oh, wow. And I'm sure it's really changed. It it certainly was uh, beautiful and very, um, I would say, crowded in Marrakesh. So it was. Everyone yeah. here is getting the word out to travel to America. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, a friend of mine just spent like a month going around the uh, Southern Europe, Northern Africa, and she said it was just fantastic. It is beautiful. Yeah, it is. And Great so, experience. Mm -hmm. The price of like just food, it's remarkable, the price of food, and you get so much for so long. Yeah, yeah. The only problem is you have to live there. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't mind the sun, though. That I would not. Oh, I love the sun. Yeah. I love the sun. Hello, Connor. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How are you? Doing well. Um, just getting back from a dentist appointment, so uh, half of my face is numb. But uh, I'm sure you can okay. understand what I'm saying. So uh, I, I don't. I must be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't understood a word. <laughs> That's all right. You know, most people when you talk about economic development, they'll uh, they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, Try explaining that, that at uh, Thanksgiving, you know, it's like the whole family just goes. Whoa. No, exactly. Exactly. Well, I think our meeting will be less painful. So I think so, too. Hey, are you aware that we're like live streaming to YouTube right now? Yeah. OK, cool. I could be friendly. <laughs> One of the prerogatives. Hey, Warren, it's Michael. I'm in the car. How are you? Hey, Michael, how are you? Pretty good. 
So I'll keep myself oh. offline so I don't crash when I look at your pretty face. So yeah, I, I, won't, yes. I, won't, I won't put the camera on. Well, that can make you crash. Exactly. So. <laughs> we'll start in a couple of minutes. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Who is this? This is Oma, Oma Holloway. I'm Chief Operating Officer of Bridge Street. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm here to support Connor. <laughs> back, a very, back up. <laughs> very professional young man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear good things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I only have good things to say about Connor. And, and thank you for the support, by the way. Oh, thank you. We really we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Like we, we, we would, you know, it would have been a little bit harder for us to get to the point we're at right now. So we're not for you on support. So thank well, you. we appreciate that. We're, we're happy to continue offering any assistance and help. Okay, so where are we? It's 7 o'clock. So we're going to uh, start this meeting. Hi, uh, my name is Warren Burke. I'm the first, oh, I'm the chair of the Economic Development Committee. And I'm also the first vice chair of um, CB9. I want to welcome you all. And I appreciate your attendance and your interest. Um, we're going to, we're going to take attendance from the video. So there's no need to go into that. We don't have any voting, voting issues on the floor tonight. Um, but let's just see, is Alex Ferguson here? Okay, Alex was just appointed to the committee. Um, all right, so the first order of business is a presentation from Bridge Street on their grant work that they have. I believe this is the old grant, Connor? Uh, it, this is the, yes, the Avenue the NYC first grant. grant. Okay, and I want to welcome uh, Omar from the bridge, who's the, uh, the CEO, and welcome. We appreciate you attending. It's, it's the COO. You gave me a you gave me a promotion. You <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we're here for. To promote. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be aspirational, but no, I'm not. Okay, wait till next week. <laughs> All right, so Connor, I turn this over to you, and you may want to give a little background. Um, because there are some new people here. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks so much for, uh, for having myself and Oma on. Um, we are from Bridge Street Development Corporation. We're a nonprofit uh, in central Brooklyn. Um, we do a whole handful of different things, but um, since I'm talking to the Economic Development Committee tonight, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense that that is a big area of concern for us. Um, and if you catch me mumbling tonight, uh, it's because I just came from the dentists uh, that numbed up like half of my mouth, but I think you should all be able to understand me. Um, if you don't hear anything that, uh, or, you know, it, it sounds like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking through a tunnel, uh, just give me a shout. Okay. Um, but yeah, for everybody who is on the call tonight, um, we have actually, we've been here before talking about this. Um, uh, back in the fall, I had the privilege of presenting, um, uh, well, really the announcement that we were going to be doing a commercial district needs assessment or a CDNA uh, for Crown Heights um, as uh, told to us in partnership with uh, the New York City Small Business Services Department. Um, so I'll hop right into this and kind of what that all looks like, but um, uh, just to kind of give everyone a, a broad picture, the CDNA um, is this initiative, the first year of a three year long grant through New York City Small Business Services um, called the Avenue NYC grant. So that money actually comes from the federal level, from uh, uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, gets funneled down to the cities like New York City, and then essentially um, they tap nonprofits like Bridge Street, local development corporations or community-based organizations to learn um, about, you know, particular areas to do these studies, to get a big 
bird's eye view of a of a small space. Um, so we're basically kind of the foot soldiers uh, for New York City small business services here going out and um, getting a full uh, holistic study of Crown Heights. So without further ado, let me show you kind of what we came up with. So. Tonight, we are talking about the Crown Heights Commercial District Needs Assessment um, and our interim findings. Uh, so uh, essentially, um, as I explained, we were tapped by NYCSBS to look at a particular study area, um, and that here is uh, Crown Heights along five commercial corridors from Atlantic Avenue all the way down to about uh, Empire Boulevard. Um, we were asked to study the five densest corridors in the neighborhood. Um, so of those five, that's Atlantic, Franklin, uh, Nostrand, Kingston, and Utica Avenue. Um, it encompasses about 1.3 square miles. Um, and, you know, as I'm sure many people on this committee already know, um, that is, you know, an area with a population of about 143,000 people. It's also like the most varied population of Caribbean immigrants outside of the West Indies and the home to the worldwide headquarters of the Shabbat uh, Lubavitch Hasidic Jewish movement. Um, so, you know, if you're probably well familiar down there on Kingston Eastern Parkway, that's where once a year during the high holidays, uh, Crown Heights gets an additional 100,000 people coming in, um, you know, for the space of two to three weeks. Um, so, in conducting this study, uh, we had some key takeaways, and that's kind of what we're going to get into today. Um, uh, and in no particular order, those are that Crown Heights is home to a significant number of these historic anchor businesses that really reflect the African American and Caribbean and Jewish cultures in the neighborhood. Um, we know that there's a huge issue with illegal dumping and garbage pickup in the neighborhood. Um, Graffiti and poorly maintained storefronts have made it kind of unappealing for people to shop in. Um, and then also just through a lot of like anecdotal evidence through, you know, many of the interviews we've had with uh, stakeholders in the area, um, uh, we've learned that there's uh, an issue with the shifting political districts and how that's kind of created like a lack of coverage um, for small business owners in Crown Heights. Um, there's no local development corporation or business improvement district in Crown Heights. So there's no like, um, you know, there, there are no entities uh, uh, in the neighborhood that work specifically for the small business owners. Um, and and in, instead it's distributed across a ton of uh, very interested and very involved, um, but, uh, less um, less supported groups. So I want to get into our business inventory. Um, uh, over the course of about three months, we went through those five corridors I showed you earlier, um, and we learned that there are storefronts um, across the neighborhood uh, at ground level, basement level, first floor level, totaling about 983, not about, sorry, eight, 983 businesses. Um, we learned generally that 14% of uh, those businesses have uh, vacant storefronts. That's uh, basically 10% uh, more than the citywide average. Um, and we learned a ton of notable findings in uh, our on the ground research as well. Uh, you can see here from this graph, um, that beauty and nail salons make up the uh, uh, the highest number of business types in the district at 114 of 819 open businesses. Um, and then after that, it's limited service restaurants and bodegas and delis. And on the other side of this chart here, you'll see that uh, supermarkets and grocery stores, you know, only amount for about 3.2% of those 819 businesses. Um, something we'll get into a little bit more later, but uh, essentially that's almost 2.5 bodegas for every supermarket or specialty food store like a butcher's or a fish market. Um, 
we did a ton of storefront observations uh, through our research being on the ground every day. We were looking at storefronts across the district and rating them on a scale of one to five, one being poor, five being excellent. Um, uh, thankfully, and, and I think you would know this just walking through Crown Heights, uh, the vast majority of businesses uh, in Crown Heights rate uh, fair or better. Um, but it, you know, you know it when you see it. Here is uh, is a burnt out storefront that's been that way for over a year on Nostrand Avenue. Uh, walk down Franklin, though, you're going to see some really some really beautiful um, spaces, and it's kind of uh, an even distribution uh, across across the neighborhood. Um, we also uh, were able to just kind of go down each street and have. Uh, an opportunity to make observations about uh, the street fronts. Um, you can see here, you know, this is just normal life in Crown Heights. Um, it's a reason to, to be there all the time. There's always activities going on. Uh, the beautiful greenways on Eastern Parkway, you know, make this an accessible neighborhood. Um, but at the same time, there are issues that, you know, we heard a lot about from speaking with uh, small business owners and consumers alike, um, you know, illegal trash dumping, that's a huge issue. Um, you know, you're also getting like uh, difficult or hostile spaces for pedestrians and traffic uh, here at Utica and Eastern Parkway. Uh, that is, you know, this junction of the dollar van route, two MTA bus lines and an MTA subway stop um, making it almost gridlocked every single day at rush hour. Um, so that's a, it's really an unpleasant place to be if you're, if you're walking about. Um, we were blessed with the help of many partners, including CB9, to pull about uh, 500 consumer surveys through the course of this research. Um, and we learned a ton from them. Uh, number one, as I mentioned, sanitation uh, is a huge issue for uh, consumers and shoppers alike in the neighborhood. 57% of consumers that we surveyed said that sanitation was their biggest issue and then landscaping and beautification, which you might be able to conflate the two. Um, safety came in third, and that was another thing that uh, we heard a lot about, how there are sort of different perceptions of safety uh, during the day and the night. Uh, here you'll see one to four, um, one uh, rates as not safe at all, uh, four as, as very safe. So you find that uh, many people uh, at nighttime feel that they are particularly unsafe or, or they're wary of their surroundings. Um, uh, another thing that we thought was really interesting was that uh, nearly half of the consumers that we surveyed uh, spend um, uh, a, a lot of money in the neighborhood and they're coming from the neighborhood. Um, I did want to highlight again that 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 tidbit I, I gave you about uh, grocery stores. Um, we included in our research uh, questions about um, shopping online and uh, many of our consumers surveyed said that they buy their groceries online. And again, there's only 3.2% of that that you know, 800 number uh, that is uh, a grocery store or a specialty food store in Crown Heights. Um, so essentially you're just getting this area where there are 143,000 people who have very few options for, um, uh, for, for ease of grocery shopping. Um, and those grocery stores that they do go to, they feel um, in many cases that they're being almost price gouged uh, because they have no other options to go to. Uh, many of the seniors, this is anecdotal, this is not data driven, but many of the seniors that I spoke with um, let me know, you know that they would leave the neighborhood to go outside to do their grocery shopping. Um, and, and that uh, is a serious issue, obviously, if you are um, uh, bound by mobility issues. Um, again, uh, thanks in no small part to CB9, we also had the opportunity to do a ton of merchant survey. Uh, we had 229 total merchant surveys. And uh, in going down those five quarters, we learned that 
Uh, over three quarters of the merchants we surveyed were minority or women owned, that 20% opened in the last two years, um, and that uh, you know uh, the majority of them say that marketing support is their biggest need. Uh, that's that's a huge issue for for many businesses that they feel that they're not being seen um, because they don't have the resources, they don't have the time to be able to devote themselves to marketing uh, to you know greater audiences. Um, Fifty percent of the merchants that we surveyed said that safety uh, was a top priority to attract customers or nearly 50%, excuse me. Uh, so that was, that was particularly concerning, especially, uh, along a few corridors, there were actually high rates of, uh, petty theft that were reported to us in many of the interviews that we had. So I just want to get here into kind of the strengths and the, and the challenges and the opportunities, really the, the, the big picture that we saw, um, through this study on Crown Heights. Um, I think it's safe to say, you know, you can go to Crown Heights and you can get just about anything you need. There's a really wide range of commercial options. You can go get your car fixed on Atlantic Avenue. You can go to this, you know, you can go to the hair nail and salon um, <laughs> of your choosing across all the different corridors. Um, and there's a very high chance that when you are going to these businesses, you are circulating the dollar among uh, minority owned businesses uh, that really reflect, like I said, that African American and Caribbean and Jewish culture in the neighborhood. Um, public transportation is amazing in Crown Heights. Um, there are so many thoroughfares um, and the LIRR station um, and, uh, and, and, you know, all the train stops along Eastern Parkway that uh, it makes it very accessible for people living in the neighborhood to uh, go outside of it, uh, and alternatively for people to visit Crown Heights. Um, and I think there's many reasons to do that. There's beautiful historic brownstones that are protected by a very dedicated preservation society. Um, there's lots of community-based organizations that uh, run exciting events. Um, and then it, it's a cultural neighborhood as well. Um, you know, the Brooklyn Children's Museum, the Jewish Children's Museum, the Brooklyn Museum, Prospect Park, all of these things are accessible to people inside the neighborhood. And um, we heard from many that that is a, is a very serious reason to stay in, in Crown Heights. Um, one uh, consumer I spoke with uh, said something along the lines of, you know, I never leave here in the summer because I can get everything I need here, you know, culturally, uh, uh, without having to, to, to go elsewhere. So uh, I think, you know, Crown Heights, you know, on its face, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent place to be, but it does have a ton of challenges. Um, illegal dumping, garbage pickup, as I said, those are top priorities for um, change here to make it more accessible, to make it more aesthetically pleasing to shoppers and visitors alike. Um, safety and perceptions of safety are important as well. Um, you know, I think we can do a, a ton with street lighting uh, just to change perceptions of safety in Crown Heights. Um, and then uh, vehicle and foot traffic uh, can also kind of uh, challenge um, physical safety across the neighborhood uh, because there are, you know, areas where uh, bike lanes and bus routes and, and traffic gridlock can make it uh, quite unsafe uh, for people going about doing um, their business in the neighborhood. Finally, like I said, I think uh, supermarkets, healthier food, those are those are big um, uh, needs for consumers in the area. And um, however we can focus on uh, improving that and making uh, Crown Heights less of a food desert um, is something that, that needs to be addressed. Um, I think there's a ton of opportunities uh, uh, from our, our our study area uh, that you know are, are talked about often. But um, cleaning Crown Heights uh, is number one. Repairing uh, street lamps and I think adjusting street lamp timing to prioritize pedestrian safety could very quickly change um, uh, th those perceptions of safety we were talking about and also uh, improve you know. Um, 
uh, pedestrian safety in those heavily trafficked areas as well. We could optimize traffic rules. Uh, we could create smoother traffic flow and safer streets and create dedicated loading and unloading areas for passengers. There's more opportunity. There's always more opportunity to activate open spaces like Brower Park and Eastern Parkway, or even the area uh, under the LIRR for community and cultural events. And then finally, um, and this is, you know, big picture um, intersectional, but I, I think there's many ways that we could go about helping businesses grow their online presence and improve their marketing because that's what they're telling us they need um, through partnerships like um, ones we could make with workforce development organizations that can provide that hands-on and technical assistance. Um, that really wraps it up for me uh, for our interim findings here. I, I want to stress again, they are just the first of many conversations um, that we'll be having about Crown Heights and these observations that we've made. But, um, you know, I, I want to open the floor for everyone here uh, to ask questions if they have them. But uh, I, I want to end on this note that, you know, we couldn't do any of this without uh, the volunteers uh, that, you know, uh, made themselves available to us throughout this entire process. And, and CB9 has been a, a huge part of that. Um, you know, we had you guys out on the streets talking to the business owners. And as one or two members on this call can um, attest to, it is no easy feat to walk, uh, you know, into a storefront and just uh, basically cold call someone in person. Um, so I thank you, uh, Dante and, uh, and others for, you know, really putting your neck out there and, uh, and getting in front of those employees and managers and business owners over and over and over again, uh, to get, you know, these important results. So, uh, thanks everyone. Thank you, Connor. Um, first of all, that was an excellent report and I'm going to leave my comments to the end but you have hit everything, okay? Whether it's economic development or different committees of CB9, which we will disseminate to those committee chairs. And it's also constant problems that we've been facing for, I've been here for like 10, 11 years. And, and you mentioned that you hit a number of areas that just have not improved. Uh, so thank you. And I just think it's fantastic. Uh, let's open this up. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the floor from our members or residents? I see a hand up. Hold on a second. Uh, Dante, could you call people who are, who are raising their hands? Yeah, I got Michael Libert. Thank you for the presentation, Kana and Oma. Appreciate it. And Warren, thanks for bringing this group out here. Just a point of clarification, Bridge Street is primarily a research organization or as a research organization who can then act as a conduit for bringing, one, fixing some of these issues you identified and bringing uh, businesses uh, that would make sense like uh, supermarkets to the community. All right. Do you want me to hit that or? or yeah, Oma, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, Bridge Street is the community development corporation. Um, we've been in uh, primarily in Bedford Stuyvesant, but we serve Central Brooklyn uh, since 1995. And uh, economic development, as Connor has said, is, uh, you know, our goal is to um, really uh, support low to moderate income families and residents in areas of housing, economic development, uh, youth workforce, and other, um, and other programs and services that help them maintain a healthy living in, in, the, in Central Brooklyn. So um, we, this opportunity to do a commercial district, a, a commercial district needs assessment is an opportunity for us to work with the community stakeholders and leaders to collect the data that for many of our communities, we just do not have, like anecdotally, or we know what needs to get done, but do not necessarily have the actual um, data to support what we already know sometimes. Um, this is, once this uh, report is completed, so we're not a research organization, so let me just say that. But we have used the information that we received from um, 
the work that we've done, uh, we've done this in Bed-Stuy, it helped us shape some of our strategies on how to support our local um, our local businesses and, and help revitalize our corridors. Uh, one of those strategies was to support the development of merchant associations, which we have also expanded to Crown Heights now. Um, and um, also the Open Streets Program, which some of you may be familiar with to Tompkins Avenue, um, Tama Sunday Merchants Association Open Streets Program, which was by far one of the best in the city, I must say. But that was actually grew out of gain, uh, you know, the, the research, the, the information we received from the CDNA, working closely with that Merchants Association, using this as an opportunity to help revitalize that corridor and healthily, and hopefully, um, because we did it during COVID, it um, helped um, them to generate revenue that they had lost. This is, um, the opportunity to do this in Crown Heights has the same uh, opportunity. The interesting thing about the CDNA also is that it's not just for us. It's really, or it's a, it will be once completed a public document for anyone can take, um, can really use and, and, and use it as a, as a beginning of the conversation, can use it as the research and data you need to come up with your own strategy. So that's one of the reasons the initial, um, this, these are the initial findings. There's so much more when we are you know, done with the, the full document um, and getting feedback from you, but this, you know, on, based on you know, some of the things that you've heard, we were listening to your questions, your feedback, so we can kind of tease out what um, we may need to look at more closely, what we may need to change, but it also becomes a document for you to um, possibly use to kind of think through what are some of the things you need for your own community. Thank you. All right, I just want to piggyback on that. Um, the, the, there are a lot of issues that were documented, and this is also a uh, document that we can use with our elected officials, as well as our um, district, our district meetings with each of the bureaus in New York City. Uh, so I think it's very valuable. Any other questions? Uh, I was going to ask, Connor, can you go back through um, slides? I'll just, I don't remember which one. I'll just tell you when. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That one. Perfect. The one right before this. This one. Um, the, the left uh corner down here the bottom with the orange thing oh you know it well <laughs> yes um this listen i have emailed the mta about this multiple times <laughs> so i would love to say oh bridge street is going to publish this um this needs to be removed so <laughs> when you all finalize this could you let me know <laughs> you got it yeah i mean listen i was on that street trying to take pictures of Nostrand in general and getting uh, boxed out from that little mm -hmm. bottleneck. Um, so I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> no surprise that that you would be well familiar with it. <laughs> Can't tell what that is. Can you guys describe it? It's, yeah. So oh go, yeah, go ahead. Honestly, it looks like a wooden structure. Um, it's really just like a wooden structure on top of like the subway grates. And listen, I've inquired with the MTA multiple times, but I'm getting the runaround. So I would love to add this as some leverage onto that. Essentially, where is this, I'm sorry. Where is this? This on is on No Strand uh, between Eastern Park Eastern Parkway and Union. And Union yeah. Okay. Um, and essentially it creates this crazy bottleneck because you get about three feet um, from the edge of that little orange long box to yeah. the front of that storefront. And then I don't know if you can see it there, but right in the, you know, in that bottom quarter of that picture, there's a little door that opens onto that greenhouse and it actually opens out into the street. So when the door opens, 
you've bottlenecked the bottleneck. Um, yeah. It's a it's a quite an quite an interesting little foot traffic pattern. What, what uh, is it though? Is it, is it trash? What what is it? Then? What was the purpose of it? You think that that is something I am still trying to get an answer to. Couldn't tell you. I think it's 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 basically. I think there's a grate there, um, and the and the yeah, subway runs under that, um, and they've yeah they've basically put a uh, some sort of barrier. Like they were doing repairs, and then maybe they stopped doing repairs there. Okay, so it's like the MTA. Yes, they definitely. Call sanitation, Dante. Yeah. Okay. Jeremy, you said they, sanitation. Yeah. Yeah, I would probably sanitation and <laughs> uh, like yeah, I mean three one one. Like it's that's yeah. strange. That is strange. But you know, but this is you know, these are it's ironic, like these pictures and, and things like that does um we will be making uh, many presentations and you too can also request us to make some of these presentations to get feedback. So maybe it might be nice, maybe we should invite MTA. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Or I think is, you know, it's like who's in charge or who has the authority to, to deal with this. Um, you know, this is, it's, it's really interesting because it, you know, at this point, somebody should be responsible for that and taking it down. Just like they're now taking down um, open restaurant locations. Like, you know, that they're now yeah. going and finally taking down those that are not being utilized anymore. And, you know, different things like the obstructions like this should be on that list. And Dante, this could be a subject for your district council meeting. Yeah. Uh, does the MTA attend those? No, but I can request their attendance. Okay. Um, uh, formally, I just want to introduce Dante Antoine. He is the what are you again? You are the you know, <laughs> district I'm, manager. He's the district <laughs> manager of CB9. And yeah. I have to tell you that we owe, we really owe the benefits of what Bridge Street is doing through Dante and his response to their needs. So I just want to thank you for that. Appreciate that, Warren. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Connor. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll second that one. Uh, <laughs> it's been uh, it's, it's been a serious pleasure uh, working with CB9 at, with uh, with with Dante being our liaison, and uh, I, I don't think we really could have done the work that we've done so far without his help. So many thanks again. Great thank statement, you. thank you. Are there any other questions or comments before I talk? Yeah, my hand is up, Warren. Ah, Mr. Labard. Going back to the work you did or are doing in Bed Stuy, are you folks involved with new innovation center that is happening around restoration? Are you partners in that or collaborating with that at all? Oma, oh, you want to take are that? You, are you talking about the new construction that they're doing? It's not um, construction yet. No, they have a plan to build the to, to build a new to build a, a yeah. new complex altogether. Right. And it's all around innovation and technology. Mm -hmm. um, the architect David Alajade is building it. Is designing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are not. Um, we are not directly involved with that. Like restoration, have been um, working on that for numerous years under COVID. Um, and but we are definitely a partner with restoration and some of the work we do. Like they actually. Um, you know, re receive support to do a backyard, a, 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 a website that's called Backyard Tourism. And we partnered with uh, Tompkins Avenue and actually got that done for the merchants on Tompkins Avenue. And that came from restoration. So we have a very close relationship on different projects, but that particular um, initiative is solely a restoration. But as a community partner, we will, you know, definitely be supportive and, um, and we will, you know, in whichever ways that it provides some synergy and, and spillover because, you know, we actually make referrals to restoration to help some of our um, uh, merchants. We do provide technical assistance and workshops and they do the same with us. But um, that particular project is, is really being led by restoration. Okay, thank you. Michael, any other comments or questions? 
No, thank you for that answer, though. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other comments or questions from our members, resident members or residents on this presentation? Okay, so I just wanna make some comments here because I do have a perspective of time in terms of what's been identified. And once again, I, I give kudos that this couldn't be more on target which as someone who is very interested and has conducted a lot of market research, um, I have to say that this is extremely valid just based on our past 10 years experience. So that's terrific. Um, I just wanna say that the first thing is, is that you provided a lot of useful information. Uh, these are things that have been a constant uh, uh, discussion you know, within the community board, as well as actions been taken. Uh, for instance, just the, the point about the lighting, while it's a small point, is an important point. And Cameron uh, kind of picked up on that, which is, which is very, very important. Um, the issue with the supermarkets, uh, as you know, we had a, we, we have a number of supermarkets in, in Crown Heights South, but in the, what we call quadrant three, which is Nordstrom from Eastern Parkway to Empire and over, there's a lack of them due to the associated being shut down. Um, from the information that I've gotten is that there will be two new supermarkets coming into that area. Uh, one on Empire Boulevard and Bedford is gonna be, I think it's Lidl, L-I-D-I, Lidy. Uh, it's like Aldi, but it's the other partner. And that's going to be at the old Firestone location, open in about two or three years. And that's a discount supermarket. Uh, the second is the uh, uh, at Empire and Nordstrom. The Associated will be coming back. In fact, we just had a, a call on that the other day. Uh, the other thing I want to note is that you have the validity of your research is that our supermarkets are expensive. And I say that as a shopper, <laughs> okay? And it's, it's really true. So I'm very interested to see how the discount supermarket will do in here. But I think the sensitivity of the market research information is, is pretty good because it's right down into the weeds, which, which is something we need. Uh, the other part is, is that, you know, this whole thing with merchants, uh, this is a battle. I was, I was economic development chair like eight years ago or seven years ago. And there were two merchants associations. Uh, there was the Flatbush and there was the Nordstrom. And they both had a lot of difficulty maintaining members and people banding together. So what, what, what I noted from your um, presentation is the talk about a business improvement district. And from our information, you know, having gone through this with Flatbush Avenue, we were working with Pratt, I believe, uh, to do a business improvement district, there are a number of steps that have to happen. And yes, you, you, I'm assuming you're involved with the um, Nordstrom Avenue Association and Church Street Association that just merged. Okay, and one block of ours is in that from, I believe, Parkland down. Okay, that's the issue. So you know, I, one of the things I'd like you to consider is how do we, how do we accomplish the business improvement district? And how do we take it from a concept to implementation? And it's a whole bunch of steps. Uh, so that's something if you're interested in, we can certainly talk off, you know, offline on. But I personally found it, and my committee members back in the day uh, found it very difficult. Uh, the, the next point is, um, I do oh, agree on like the point. Can I, I'm sorry. Can I just I just, on that point, I didn't want it to, to go Please. without out saying, um, which is interesting that you say that because, um, you know, as we were doing this work and yes, we were working with NAMA um, mm -hmm. and we are still making that we were able to get another grant to exclusively work with building merchants association. So we're working with um, Crown Heights. I mean, no, mm -hmm. we're working with NAMA. We still continue with NAMA. We are working to get Franklin Avenue 
as another, okay. as another, which you're right. It, this is not easy, but we were able to get a significant grant to, to intensely focus on this for the next six months for um, until the end of June. So we may be reaching out again. <laughs> we will be reaching out again because no, and any support, it, we're it, there. It, 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 you know, for that support, um, Nostrand Avenue is definitely it. The thing about the bid, which is in um, and business improvement district, and and clearly the um, corridors in Crown Heights is is you know probably will be more um, inclined if there is that interest to become a bid, and and they will tell you it can take up to two years. Correct. to become a bid and so part of it is just even engaging the businesses so that um they can make the decision do they want to become a bid so no, correct and the and landlords the landlords and so part of that step is just also um you know ironically is that we were able to at least while we're doing this start putting some foundation in place to start organizing or having some form of engagement with these businesses beyond just the surveys, beyond just the data to really get them talking about how do you organize? What does it mean to be a merchant association and or moving towards a bid? So we have already just at least start putting those feelers out there because I think, you know, just as we, as Connor noted in his um, preliminary findings, there are no real dedicated economic de- development engines in Crown Heights. Correct. No, that's correct. Um, just for the people at the meeting, um, in order to fund the economic development district, the landlords of the properties are taxed. Okay, and they're the ones who who put the money in to support the district. So in, in our case, you know, we do not have many big landlords. We have, especially along Nordstrom Avenue, we have all individual small floor plates. So that's it. That's really the challenge. But uh, number one, I thank you for what you said. And we're on board to offer any assistance, uh, either through the local elected officials we support, and they support us, as well as uh, anything that we can do to give you data and testimony. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last comment I have is your, your finding that there are 20% new businesses in the last two years. And that is just phenomenal. Okay, um, we have gone without new businesses and businesses shutting down uh, pre-COVID through COVID. And the one thing that I've personally seen, and I ride a bike, so I ride all around, is that I'm impressed with the number of new businesses opening on Nordstrom Avenue, and which is just terrific, because that means the the multiplier of the money they spend, the, the whole thing of employment and everything else. The other thing that I noticed, and it, it may not be a positive reason, but there, there's starting to be a lot of construction of smaller projects on Nordstrom Avenue. I believe there's one on President Street by the community board office and also on Sterling Street and Nordstrom where they're preparing. You can see the building is all shut down. And you know, that's gonna that's gonna while well, well, not getting into politics or the effects on housing. Um, that will bring new storefronts to our community, which could be attractive. So, Connor, good job on that, picking that up. <laughs> uh, any other any other comments, Connor? I'd like you to do one thing. You have a phase two of this grant. That's correct. So, um, just inform us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, essentially, this is the first year. This study is phase one. Um, phase two is taking all of the feedback that we've received, you know, um, notwithstanding the conversations we've had this evening, um, and starting to implement um, some change projects from that feedback. So, for instance, you know, talking about anything from the small little, you know, um, uh, buds to nip, like the MTA mm-hmm. grate on uh, on Nostrand or lighting. Um, and timing, 
um, that begins in phase two. Okay. I just want to offer our support again. Um, everything that you're saying we, we have interest in, I'm speaking as first vice chair at this point, we have committees who are facing these discussions every day. So please use us as a tool to reach your objectives. It would be terrific. And include us in the discussions. Okay, Certainly. it's more meetings for you, Connor, but you could do it. You know. well, That's right. <laughs> well, let's, let's just say that Connor is, is you know, and, and he is the, uh, you know, within Grid Street, he's dedicated to Crown Heights. So, mm -hmm. um, and part of this is that we do want to reach as many audiences as possible to okay. inform them that some parts during the preliminary this is just the preliminary part to get feedback. And then there will be an opportunity when the final, the comprehensive, the final document is done, then there'll be another set of, of outreach so that you, you'll even get more information. So, and that is we want to make sure, and then there will be um, online and um, a hard copy document that we will want to make sure it reaches as many people and we will be hosting with partners um, to reaching all those audiences um, for for their feedback and to inform. That's great. I have to tell you, I am I have a lot of gratitude as chair of this committee and being on community board nine, and plus I'm excited uh, because the the first process in terms of a process is identifying, and this has given us the material to identify. So thank you, and I think. I think the committee will be energized by a lot of these issues and projects, so, as well as other committees. My last question is, is that if you send us this document, can we distribute it to our, our full board, the presentation document that you just made? Uh, Oma, you've done this before, I think so. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think I, I, we would need to, to check with. Um, we'll check it out. But, let's but that know. I, I actually think it's fun because, you know, sometimes, and, and this is an option too, we can, um, we are asking, um, you know, if you feel it's appropriate to maybe have an info, you know, some, a couple of minutes to do an info presentation to the board okay. um, that we can ask. So, which means they would have access to the PowerPoint. So, it's about the same. Okay. But, probably, well, but, they, but it has to be clear. These are prelim preliminary findings, which part of the feedback is helping us tweak. These are right. not the, this is not the final document. So as long as everybody's clear about that. Um, okay. but it, well, it, let's it, do it, this. Uh, let's hold off on sending it out. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss with Dante and our chair, Fred, um, about we have public hearings every meeting. So maybe that could be an appropriate time for you to present this document. I think uh, that would which, be excellent. Okay, but I had to hear from the boss first. Of course. So we'll go from there, all right? Okay, any other discussion? And thank you again. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's move on to our, our next thing. That was Bridge Street. Okay, we're, we're gonna jump to old business because that's what's okay. on the agenda. Thank uh, you all. Want, thank you. I We're gonna. To... I'm gonna jump off. But thank you so okay. much. Thank, thank you so much. Take care. Okay, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, okay, Dante is our district manager, and he has brought up the idea to do a program of financial literacy. So he'll take this one. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dante Arnwan. I'm the district manager for CB9. Uh, last committee meeting, we had uh, discussed doing a, a financial literacy um, event, maybe workshop, pop-up situation um, in the district. Uh, what we know is that, you know, in our district, there's a lot of folks who don't have um, bank accounts, right? And they may or may not have um, appropriate identification. And so what we want to do is connect people to um, economic resources. So, you know, there are programs like IDNYC where people can use those um, IDs to go and get um, bank accounts. And so what we wanted to do is to, you know, possibly do some type of event like that 
uh, in the district. Now, I reached out to Carver. I hadn't heard back from Carver. Um, so right now, that's just kind of at a standstill. But I do know that we do ha we have a good relationship with Chase Bank. Um, they often do workshops. So what I can do um, is I can reach out to Shakima uh, at Chase to see exactly what they have in their portfolio in terms of community engagement workshops. Um, it would be nice for us to, to start partnering with some of the banks uh, in the community. Now, once Carver reaches back out, then we can partner with them. Um, but, you know, I, I do think, you know, getting people um, familiar with financial literacy, understanding bank accounts, it doesn't necessarily mean that if Chase is out there that they're going to get a Chase bank account. But I do think like getting information from Chase and having an understanding of, you know, what a checking account is, what is a savings, what credit is, so on or so forth, is going to be important for anyone. And I think that <clears throat> something that I've seen just in passing is that it would be nice to um, connect youth to uh, financial literacy early. Um, I know I've worked at DHS, I've worked with kids who resided in shelters, and I know that a lot of those kids didn't, you know, know a lot about financial literacy. And, you know, I was very fortunate enough to be in Boy Scouts, and so I learned about financial literacy through that. And so that teaches you a lot along the way. And I think it's extremely important that we teach this generation early on um, how to ho hopefully make money, but have a bank account, budget, manage it, um, and take care of themselves financially, you know, and savings, you know, not getting into the realm of politics. We don't know how things are going to look in the future. So it's extremely important that, you know, we start teaching our youth that they should be, you know, financially liter uh, literate um, as they start to to age. And so, you know, I, I leave this open to the committee. I'm open um, to doing anything. Um, you know, it, it, it really comes down to the committee, what you all are interested in doing uh, as a group. Um, and then we can put it together. But um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm finished with uh, my statement. Thank you. Any comments or questions for Dante? Well, I have a question and comments. Uh, first of all, I think this is terrific. And I think you're 100% right. Um, I think that number one, we should partner with the youth committee and also the education committee. And as well as doing pop-ups, which I think is important right. um, in terms of the adults in our community, uh, that we, we start doing some sort of program and of course right here would be chase where if i was if i was to suggest the location for the pop-up i would say carver um you know i think i think that's a good thing to do so let's put this on all of our agendas and i think the main the main action point at this time is for you to speak with chase and to see what they would do and it could be for september okay it, you know no one's saying no I'd like to do a pop-up when the weather gets nice in front of Carver. Right. And I'm sure we can muster that without too much, you know, work and issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but I'm all for this. And are there any objections from the committee members or the residents? And, and I would, I would add to that, you know, what I've been trying to do, uh, I've been working out to city agencies, um, been reaching out to city agencies, working with them to try to, create like a routine schedule of district pop-ups. Now the dates aren't solidified for everything, but I've worked, I'm, I've got HPD, so that's good. They have their mobile unit. Um, I think I'm gonna be able to get HRA. I think it would be nice if we could do something similar with the Economic Development Committee. Now, I don't know which, um, which financial institution, you know, fits the bill for this type of thing, but it would be nice if we could do something like maybe every, last Friday of the month, this organization is going to be at this place at this time every last Friday. And then it's just recycled and everyone knows that, you know, that service will be It'll provided. Be okay, yeah. so let's discuss this and get back to the committee at the next meeting. We have some time, but I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And, and if I you guys know financial institutions, let, let me know. Yeah. I mean, the important that everybody should know that Look, the whole issue on the community board is funding. Uh, we basically do not have money for this. 
Uh, we have a set budget by uh, the mayor's office, but we're certainly capable of going out and getting organizations to fund this. So in this case, let's just say, for example, it was Carver Bank. Um, I'm sure we could secure funding from them, okay, to get some to get some support there. As well as this is something that our committee members can participate in. I know I certainly will. And but you need a representative from Carver Bank who has the details. Yeah. Okay, and not just the concepts. As I'm the king of concepts, but I, you know, it's the details that matter. So that's good. Any other questions? Okay, the next thing is a commercial uh, small business canvas of our major arteries. And that was again put forth from Dante. And yes. I have to say it's, it's a welcome, it's it's a welcome thing that he's suggesting these things. Uh, that's something I think we should do. Uh, but I'm not going to bring it up until the weather gets warmer. But basically, conceptually, what this entails is on the major arteries that uh, Connor just mentioned, is taking an afternoon, dividing it up and just identifying which businesses are there, what type of business it is, and what as important is what's empty. And the other part we can add on is what's coming online, because I do think there are structures coming online. But let's table that, if you don't mind, until uh, the weather breaks a little. And, you know, we, we, you know, you and I can go into Carver and discuss a number of things. So we can go from there and see what happens. But I think it's very valuable. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll quickly ahead. just add, um, you know, if you, I don't know if you could see it from Connor's presentation, but their CDNA didn't cover the entire community board nine. So they've done right. like half the worst, uh, half, half of the work for us. So we just need to do like Empire down to Clarkson um, on our major corridors and then just condense the information. So could you just define what a CNDA is for everybody? A commercial district needs assessment. Okay. Thank yes. you. Okay. I, was, I, I didn't want to interrupt Connor, but we need to <laughs> define the jargon. Okay. Yeah. All right. The last item I have is the spring fair. Um, I have no news on that. As of yet, I'm sure that there are people in our administrative office and on the board who are busy as beeves thinking about it. But right now, I do not have any additional information. But I will be redundant and say that we could use some donations. We could use identification of local food vendors. So if the people on this meeting can think of that, all right, and for the food vendors, it's mostly mobile trucks. What we do is uh, we're at, I don't know where we'll be this year, but I think we'll probably be in the same place last year. And we shut down Clawson. Yeah, yeah, Clawson. Yeah, Clawson. Clawson. And, um, you know, that's where the food trucks are. But we'd like to feature, last year we just did it by uh, the seat of our pants. But this year, in year two, with some experience, We'd like to, you know, welcome some of our local restaurants and caterers to do that. So if people want to disseminate that and see if there's any interest, just give uh, Dante a, a email on that. And that's really what I have. Uh, in terms of new business, is there any new business we need to discuss? Okay. Well, we have a lot on our plates, and the important part is for us to be motivated to implement it. So let's put on our thinking caps, think about it. And I just want to thank everybody. I just think it's terrific that you're here. Um, I have to tell you, I'm really blown away by the Bridge Street presentation. And that's, that's, some, that's someone who does it commercially. Okay, I, I do that stuff, not now because I'm old. But, um, you know, I have a lot of experience on that. That's the best information I've seen. So that's just terrific. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Second by Michael Labaud. Anybody object? Abstain? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Have a safe night. Bye-bye.
And thanks, thank Juan. you. Thank Love you. Everyone, Bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Don.